So today we will read uh, Nazum chapter 2 and 3. He who scatters has come up before your face, man the fort, watch the road, strengthen your flanks, fortify your power mightily. For the Lord will restore the excellence of Jacob like the excellence of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out and ruined their wine branches. The shields of his mighty men are made red, the valiant men are in scarlet, the chariots come with flaming torches in the day of his preparation, and the spears are brandished. The chariots rage in the streets, they jostle one another in the broad roads, they seem like torches, they run like lightning. He remembers his nobles, they stumble in their walk, they make haste to her walls, and the defense is prepared. The gates of the rivers are open, and the palace is dissolved. It is decreed, she shall be led away captive, she shall be brought up, and her maidservants shall lead her as with the voice of doves beating their breasts. Though Nineveh of old was like a pool of water, now they flee away. Halt, halt, they cry, but no one turns back. Take spoil of silver, take spoil of gold, there is no end of treasure or wealth of every desirable price. She is empty, desolate and waste. The heart melts and the knees shake. Much pain is in every side, and all their faces are drained of color. Where is the dwelling of the lions, and the feeding place of the young lions? Where the lion walked, and the lioness, and the lion, lion's cub? And no one made them afraid. The lion tore in pieces, enough for his cubs, killed for his lionesses, filled his caves with prey, and his dens with flesh. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will burn your chariots in smoke, and the sword shall devour your young lions. I will cut off your prey from the earth, and the voice of your messengers shall be heard no more. Woe to the bloody city! It is all full of lies and robbery. Its victim never departs. The noise of a whip and the noise of rattling wheels, of galloping horses, of clattering chariots, Horsemen charged with bright sword and glittering spear. There is a multitude of slain, a great number of bodies, countless corpses. They stumble over the corpses because of the multitude of harlotries of the seductive harlot. The mist mistress of sorceries who sells nations through her harlotries and families through her sorceries. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will lift your skirts over your face. I will show the nations your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. I will cast abominable filth upon you, make you vile, and make you a spectacle. It shall come to pass that all who look upon you will flee from you and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will be on her? Where shall he see comforters for you? Are you better than Noaman that was situated by the river that had the waters around her? whose rampart was the sea, whose wall was the sea. Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was boundless. Put and Lubim were your helpers, yet she was carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed to pieces at the head of every street. They cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. You also will be drunk, you will be hidden. You also will seek refuge from the enemy. All your strongholds are fig trees with ripened figs. If they are shaken, they fall into the mouth of the eater. Surely your people in your midst are women. The gates of your land are wide open for your enemies. Fire shall devour the bars of your gates. Draw your water for the siege. Fortify your strongholds. Go into the clay and tree the mortar. Make strong the brick kiln. There the fire will devour you, the sword will cut you off. It will eat you up like a locust. Make yourself many like the locust. Make yourself many like the swarming locusts. You have multiplied your merchants more than the stars of heaven. The locust plunders and flies away. Your commanders are like swarming locusts and your generals like great grasshoppers. Which camp in the hedges on a cold day. When the sun rises, they flee away, and the place where they are is not known. Your shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. Your nobles rest in the dust. Your people are scattered on the mountains, and no one gathers them. Your injury has no healing. Your wound is severe. All who hear news of you will clap their hands over you. For upon whom has not your wickedness passed continually? Amen. Amen. So just I would like to remind you, so 
here the Nahu, God raised him uh, as a prophet from Judah. He prophesied about Nineveh. Uh, and uh, Nineveh was, is the cap, uh, was the capital for the Assyrian kingdom. So in those days, Assyria was the great power. Great power. So uh, as we know through history and in the scripture, uh, when Assyrian king, they invaded the ten tribes, uh, Israel, and they destroyed Israel. And now, uh, we know during the time of Hezekiah, so they camp around Hezekiah to take over Judah. But by grace and mercy of the Lord, God protected the Judah. So during the time of Hezekiah, so we know in the scripture in Isaiah, so because he is a good king, he prayed, he depended upon the Lord, he trusted and God take care of uh, the Judah. But here now, probably uh, around, uh, uh, around 80 years, so here the Nahum, not, not 80 years, probably around uh, 50 years, here Nahum, he again, he started to prophesy about the Nineveh, the capital city of the Assyria. So during the time today we are going to see uh, about the fall of Nineveh, God is going to completely destroy Nineveh. Also, God is prophesying about the fall of the Judah. You know, so Nineveh, if you, it fall uh, 612, you know, as the historians they say, uh, 612, but Judah fall probably around uh, uh, 600 and uh, around that time, 605, the first deportation started and uh, then uh, probably around 508, uh, uh, not 80, 590 something like that is completely destroyed Judah. But God, He prophesied uh, 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 to the Nineveh and Judah about the farm. So God is going to tell about the difference the fall of Nineveh and the, the fall of the Judah what he is going to deal with this so and also you know in, in those days Assyria was the great power so we read in chapter 3 about uh, not 2 lion so lion is the uh, king of the beast so so here Nineveh in those days it's like America it's a super power so now it's time, Ameri sorry, Assyria is going to fall. Not only Assyria, it is Israel. So when I read this prophecy, you know today America is the superpower and it impact, if somebody want to impact America, the same person might impact the Israel. So it is related probably, you know, this is a prophecy. So I thought, you know, probably, uh, maybe uh, like uh, to happen so now so we saw last week chapter 1 uh, so we saw uh, the the prophet vision he saw in literally the vision the things going to happen for the city of Nish, uh, Nineveh and also uh, we saw he, God is going to restore the Judah so today we will uh, to the prophecy about the judgment of Nineveh and also the restoration of the um, Israel, Judah. We, last week we saw few verses about the restoration of the Judah. So again, uh, verse 2, you know, proph prophecy always it's a mixture. So you should not always uh, read all the word, it, it, it implicate for the nation. So the verse 1, so I will come back the verse 1 again. It is for the nation of Nineveh. But in the chapter 2, it is for the uh, Israel. So God said, so let's see verse 2. For the Lord will restore the excellence of Jacob like the excellence of Israel. For the emptier have emptied them out and ruined their vain branches. So, so what it means? So there is an emptier, is, uh, is going to come to uh, completely empty Israel. That is the you know prophecy. And God said, though they emptied the nation of Israel, I will restore them. I will restore them. I will take care of them. 
you know we know lot of prophecy you know the prophecy yet to finish is all about the restoration of the judah and the restoration of the church church you know church today you know we can implement the same thing today you know if you go to the big big church or uh, you know some of the churches lot of uh, empty space you can able to see you know the the enemy want to destroy the churches by affecting the families christian families and making the empty but god said he will going to restore the church it is amazing prophecy for church you know amazing prophecy for christians you know sometime as the believers when when the christian families so sometime when we feel we are emptied out we are emptied out we don't have anything sometime we will feel it in our own life both in spiritual as well as, well as the physical life but god when when god, when things put right god will restore so it is for the uh, nation of israel judah and the church and the christian families today so you know isaiah 4 we know it's a short chapter it is amazing chapter about the restoration of uh, judah so can you read uh, verse 1 uh, sorry 2 in that in that day mm. the branch of the lord shall be beautiful and glorious mm. and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appearing for those of Israel who have escaped mm. and it shall come to pass that he who is left in zion and remains in jerusalem will be called holy everyone who is recorded among the living in jerusalem when the lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of zion and purged the blood of jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning amen then so so what God said, see the emptier is going to empty the nation of Judah. But God said, when the Lord has washed away the filthy of the daughter of Zion. So why God allowed the nation of Israel to go for empty? Because of the filthiness. Because of the filthiness, the evil, evil thing. As we know in the scripture, uh, during the time, you know, all the pagan kings, uh, pag uh, you know, the, the kings, after Manasseh and Joshua is a good king. So Manasseh was an evil king. Evil king. He, he again he started to do all the idol worship. And all the rest after Joshua, the, all the kings they were evil people. They, they put lot of idols in, in, the, in, the, in Judah and brought the destruction for that nation. So God said, Though I emptied, so I uh, allowed them, let them go for captivity. But God said, I will wash away the filthy of the daughter of Zion. You know, it is the greatest blessing, hope for the God's children. You know, you and me, when we go away sometime, but any time when we come back to our Lord, He can be able to restore all the blessings, whatever we lost. Probably we lost health, probably we lost wealth. Probably all the spiritual blessings, whatever we lost, whatever the evil emptied out from us, so our Lord restore everything. That is amazing blessing. You know, God restore His children. Hallelujah. That, you know, as the children of God, we should always keep this in our mind. You know, the Lord which we serve, sometimes, you know, we without unintentionally, we may drift away from his way. But when we come back, so God, he restored all the excellency. So you can read all the, the blessings uh, God is going to give to the nation of Israel. Uh, so God will, when God restore, when he is in our midst, so he will make the nation of Israel to be a great blessing. So the same way when God is in our midst, in our, in our families, in our personal life, so God will make us a blessing. You know, it's amazing where I, I encourage you, go back and read the whole chapter and meditate. It is an amazing blessing. But only the key word is the, the Lord wash away the filthy of the daughter of Zion. That's the key word. Key word. When they come back, when the children, as we know in Zechariah, so the one day the nation of Israel, they are going to call upon him. 
Lord Yeshua, save us, Lord, save us. Are we all the nation? Uh, they are coming against us. When they call as a one nation, one nation, God will restore. So as a family, so sometimes as a family, so as husband and wife and children <coughs> together in one voice, one voice. When we call upon the name of the Lord for God to restore our life, our family, God hear our prayer. It is amazing. It is amazing. So God said, God promised to his children uh, and during the prophecy, when the prophecy about the uh, downfall of Nineveh, God said, though my children may go empty, but you know what? I am going to restore my nation. Not you. Not you. You know, the punishment for God's children and the punishment for the pagan, it is entirely different. It is entirely different. God always Love his children. He loves his children. People, those who washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, God loves them. God loves them. But as a father, he chastised them. He want to return to him. But not in the, the pagans, the, the idol worshiper. Then God, when the time comes, their judgment is completely destruction. We can go we are going to meditate today's, you know, the verses, the rest of the verses. The God uh, scatter everybody but here now the prophet he started to prophesying about the downfall of Nineveh so the first word is said he who scatter has come up before your face um, uh, man the fort watch the road strengthen your flanks fortify your power mightily so God said see God is giving warning to them see you you have a great army Nineveh you have a great army let your you put all your uh, strengthen your army you strengthen your your hold oh, you know in those days Nineveh is the very safest place they have a big walls around the city Nineveh so nobody can't easily come and enter into the city because of the wall give protection so God said you know you can strengthen your walls you can strengthen your uh, army, but you know what? I am going to destroy. That is the, you know, God is, you know, people used to say, uh, you know, thief will come without our knowledge. But here God said, today I am going to uh, judgment. Nobody can't uh, protect you from my judgment. You know, that is the, uh, here. But God said, if you read in chapter 3, see, uh, um, uh, are you... Are you better than Noaman? Noaman is the city uh, in Egyptian. You know, Egypt, the city called Thebes. So this is the is one of the wealthiest city in Egypt. So in Hebrew, uh, they call No. I mean, you know, it's kind of pet name. So this is the pet name. So God said, see the Egyptian, the 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 the, the wonderful city called Thebes. It's a it's a like kind of Nineveh. Nineveh, it's a rich city, lot of wealth in those uh, city. But because of the sin of this city, you know, no Amman, so it's a, it's a lot of sin. Uh, as we know, Egyptians are also idol worshippers. So they are also immoral people. So when God brought judgment, God used the Assyrian. You know, the same Assyrian, the Nineveh. The God raised Assyrian. When the Assyrian... <coughs> They invaded the Egyptian city called Thebes, no Amman. When they came, so as we know, you know, Egyptian also, they have a good army. They have a good army like uh, Nineveh, uh, sorry, um, Assyrian. It's a, a wonderful army. The city also well protected city. It's uh, the walls are very big like Nineveh. But because of the evil, God brought judgment to the city of Noaman. So, how God brought judgment? By raising the Assyrians. You know, now they are going to be judged by the Lord. So, the, the, the same group of people, the Assyrians, they came against Noaman. So, Noaman is also a wealthy city. And they have a good nation, Ethiopia and Egypt. Where their strength? You know, Ethiopia and they have... Because of the wealth, 
you know the Ethiopia and Egypt they send support for the city they will protect them so when Assyria when Assyrian came against Norman so the city they asked get uh, um, help from Ethiopia Ethiopia also we know it's a big army in those days and also Egypt also very big army so both the nations they came and helped the, the one of the city in the uh, it, uh, Egypt Egypt though they came to help the city God raised the Assyrian to destroy the city so now God said see that is the happening for the Noamah but now it is your time now your time so you can ask all the help but your 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 time was planned so that's why God said you can strengthen your army you can uh, protect your walls so your destruction was planned by the Lord you know we will see the uh, sorry seven if you read seven it is decreased God said see you can take care of yourself but it is decreased by the Lord God God has a time for everybody everybody every nation but once the decrease decreased from the Lord nobody can save nobody can save you know that's why prophecy is about you know when God before he lay the foundation he has the blue sketch he has his own blue sketch he know what is going to do at what time at what day who will uh, you know, he know how many uh, families he know everything in the in the in his sketch and then he laid the foundation he laid the foundation now you know according to the the plan which he has so now you know prophecy if a good prophet good prophet the, the spirit of the prophecy will come and rest upon them and God will take them to show the blueprint to them and understand in which day it is written so here God took the prophet Nahum and show the date for the destruction for the Nineveh so this is the day planned from the Lord so the it is the decreed decree it is already decreed you can't be able to save yourself so only one thing can be able to save what is the thing repentance if they repent you know we know in Jonah time and he he pronounced the judgment of the Lord but they repented to the Lord so but now it is decreased and she shall be led away captive so you are going to captivity nobody can't save you you can strengthen your army you can strengthen all your wealth everything but the decree God you are going to let away captivity so so as we know in the scripture why you know sometimes why God you know want to destroy the nation of Azariah why God want to destroy allow uh, destroy the nation of Azariah lamentation 313 if you read it's an amazing word for uh, yeah you can read for he does not affect willingly no grief the children of men yeah he does not affect willingly that is his heart god doesn't want to destroy anyone willingly nor grieve the child of men if something if somebody some nations want they 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 want to do evil all the time they are not able to return to the lord then God will bring destruction to the nation. That's why, you know, sometimes moral people, they will have a good family life and they will get or receive all the blessing. Though they are, they may not accept the Lord, they might have the moral value. So God, He is the loving Father. He is taking care of the whole universe. Whole universe. But at the end, if somebody not accepted Christ, they will go to the destruction. Uh, uh, hell that is absolutely true but in this year God give opportunity to people to accept Christ so he gives opportunity so if somebody want to do evil in their heart to harm others to destroy the uh, you know 
the the way of the Lord, so then God will bring judgment. You know that's why James said, you know some of the sin, not James. You know, um, um, first, uh, you know, you, you in a in a way pistol, uh, you know some of the sin. Yeah, can you read First Timothy? Some men's sins are clearly evident, preceding them to judgment, but those of some men follow later. Yeah, some you know, some of the sin was judgment. You know, you, you know, God is the righteous judge. He's the righteous judge. So, but some of the sin will bring judgment immediately. Immediately. So here God patiently waited for the Niniva. And he allowed, he is going to allow destruction. So here God allowed the nation of Noamon to repent. But they, they hardened their heart. God brought judgment. You know it is applicable for nations. It is applicable for families and individuals. Individuals. So why the Lord brought judgment to Nineveh? So God said in the chapter 2, Woe to the bloody city it is all full of lies and robbery it is bloody city bloodshed you know bloodshed it bring the wrath of the lord bring wrath of the lord you know anyway anyway fighting each other and uh, killing the baby then you know people that is the bloodshed bloodshed that is the the canaanites they did in those days god said the land vomited them. You know, we can read in De um, Deuteronomy. So, the land vomited them because of the bloodshed of the Canaanites. So, the bloodshed will bring judgment to the nation. Why? The blood has life. The blood has life. You know, we can read in the Old Testament. Blood has life. In the New Testament also. Blood has life. So, the life cry out to the Lord for judgment. You know, as we know, in Cain and Abel. So, uh, Abel, uh, Abel was a righteous man. But Cain, he wanted to kill, he killed uh, uh, Abel. The blood asked the Lord for judgment. You know, why God gave the examples? You know, the bloodshed is bring destruction to somebody. So, killing baby, you know, for example, today, the world abortions, in the name of abortion, it brings judgment to the nations. Any nations. And also, killing each other. Killing each other. You know, you know in those days, uh, the nation of Nineveh, they want to take other wealth. You know, you know some of the weaker nations. In those days, they are the, they are the lion in those days. Big uh, superpower nation. So, they want to get all the other uh, nations' wealth. So, in order to get their wealth, they will go and destroy them. They are the, uh, you know, the Assyrian, you know, the, um, the historians, they say it's a cruel people. They want to, when they invade some nations, they will kill them mercilessly to all the, even the babes. They will uh, dash the babes in the, you know, that's a, that kind of, you can't imagine, that kind of cruel people, they shed the innocent blood. But now this is their time. God brought judgment. So, woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. Robbery. Taking others' blessings. Taking others' wealth. And also, lies. Full of lies. They want to um, enlarge their territory. So, they want to do all the lies. You know, all the immoral behavior was happened in the in the city of Nineveh. God said, because of this, because of this, you know, as we read in, you know, he does not afflict willingly anybody. God is a loving God. He loving God. But he has his moral value. God has a moral value. God has so when when somebody uh, go against his uh, against the moral value which God Put the heart, uh, put in the mind and heart of the man. So then God will bring judgment. Go to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. Its victim never depart. And also here, 
because of the multitude of harlot race of the seductive harlot. So they will do all the evil thing, all the evil thing, harlotry thing, you know, you know, wealth, you know, is wealth, you know, you can see today also, some rich people, you can see they will all do all evil things, harlotry kind of thing, so more immoral behavior, so you can see, and also, not only they will do, they will influence others to do that, they will make others to spoil, to influence them, to do the evil, you know, tempting or uh, attractive others to do the evil thing. So in those days, Nineveh, they they were all the evil people, evil people, and not only that, and they spread out the evil, the evil things to the neighboring nations. They will make everybody to. Uh, do all the harlotry thing and also the mistress of sorceries the the women in the in the city they do all the sorcery you know they have uh, 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 have a relationship with the evil 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 spirit and do all the sorceries and witchcraft to destroy others you know also you know, sorceries, why they are doing the uh, sorceries? To destroy somebody, to take out somebody's wealth because of the jealousy, because of the evil desire. So also, you know, bec the, because they want to take power, the control the whole world in those days, so they want to uh, jealous over all the nation. They want to you know the take everything from somebody's property so now this is their time god brought judgment to the nations and and verse 16 uh, <coughs> chapter 3 if you read you have multitude your merchant merchandise more than the stars of heaven you know the businesses businesses they, they are not doing the right way they want to you know businesses always you know we saw the, when they buy things, they will have a big, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, yeah. uh, Ifa, you know, it's a big, you know, it's a very big uh, uh, container. It, ca it contain, it's a very huge volume. But when they sell, they will reduce the volume. You know, but uh, the same way. So here, multi multiplied your because God, no, God is the righteous judge. God watching everything. He knows our thought. He knows our heart. We can, you know, sometimes people will speak nicely to somebody, but in their heart, you know, they were, they want to, uh, uh, you know, double, double word. We, you know, people used to speak in their heart. They will want to uh, come against. So God knows that kind of thought. So God said, because of all these things, God is going to judgment for the nation of Nineveh. So when God brings judgment, God brings judgment, nobody can protect them. So can you read Nahum 11 and 12? Where is the growing of the lions and eating the young lions? Will the lion walked, the lioness and lion cub, lion's cub, and no one made them afraid. The lion tore in pieces and up for his cubs, killed for his lionesses, filled his cage with prey and his dens with flesh. Ah. So in those days, the lion, it's a, it's a, the Nineveh, sorry, the Assyrian, they were the great power. They have a good army, good army, they have a good wealth. So they thought, we will control the whole world, whole world. So now, so now God said, Behold, I am coming against you. So though we know in history, you know, the Babylonian in those days, God raised Babylonian. Babylonian, they came power uh, in those days. The Babylonian, they came and uh, they destroyed the city of Nineveh and um, they destroyed the kingdom of Assyria. But God said, 
I am against you. Against you. You know, God is the one. He can be able to raise up anybody. Babylonian also. God brought judgment to Babylon also. As we know in Daniel chapter 5. God raised Medo-Persian. So here, God said, I am against you. You know, sometimes we know the king's call, God will allow somebody, sometimes God will allow the evil people to raise up. We don't know what, what, what is going to uh, do with that. So, as we children of the Lord, we always want to pray for the peace of nation. That is our, our God asks us to do. But God is the one set up the kings. He knows. He, because the plan he has, already he has the blueprint. So God said, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will burn your chariot. God said, I am going to burn. It is a burn. You know, the word which he prophesied, it will come to pass exactly. Exactly. God said, I am going to burn the city. Burn the city. And also, burn the chariot in smoke. And the sword shall devour your young lion. Your people. Not only uh, you are going to uh, put fire. And also, the sword, they will going to come and destroy the sword. You are young lions, the young, ch young children, the youngsters in the Assyrian. So God said again, I will cut off your prey. You know, I will take out all your wealth. I am going to, I will take out all your wealth. And the people, those who are bondage by the Assyrian, God will going to release them. And uh, these are the prophecies, you know. And uh, in verse 5, again God said, I am, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will lift your strike over the, your face. I will. You know, I will. So it is God said everything. I will. It is the covenant. It is the covenant. Uh, so here, if you read uh, Nahum 3.12. Shaken, they fall to the mouth of the eater. Surely your people in your midst are women. The gates of your land are wide open for your enemies. Fire shall devour the bars of your gates. Yeah, man. So the 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 fruit is ripe now. Means now it is ready. You know, ripe ripe fruit can't stay in the uh, tree. So now it is ready for judgment. You know, also. You know when the when the in the trees you know in in, our, in India sometime people will go to the uh, climb the trees and they will shake the tree all the ripe fruit will fall so it is weakened so God said see I am going coming against you my presence the presence of the Lord will weaken all the people though. Assyrian has a superpower, so the presence of the Lord will weaken them. You know, the, uh, the Babylonian going to come and shake you, that's it. So then nothing will be left over. So because you are sin, you are, it's, a, right, and it's ready for judgment. And also, you are commanders. So when God come against the nation, your commander are like a Swami locust. And your generals like great grasshopper, which camp in the huge on the cold day. And when the sun rises, they flee away. You know, you know, when the sun comes up with a heart, it will flee away. So, you know, probably when you can see the uh, Babylonian come and invade the Assyria, but who is behind the scene? Who is behind the scene? The Lord is behind. The Lord is behind. That's why, uh, you know, sometimes people, when God raised a Babylonian, the Babylonian, they thought because of their power, because they have a good army, the Nebuchadnezzar, he said, Oh, I built the city of um, Babylon. You know, when, when the word came out his mouth, God brought judgment to <coughs> Nebuchadnezzar. So, so, anything happen, anything happen in our life, in, in, uh, in somebody's life, we should, it is God is behind the sin. God is behind the sin. 
So we should ask, the, why God wrote all these two churches today? You know, we, we want to read all the history. Uh, so we, you and me to understand who is behind the Lord. Our Lord is behind. Our God, the God which we serve is a great God. He is almighty God. He can control the nations. He can control the nations. Sometimes, you know, we are not able to understand the power of the Lord. He can be able to control the nation. He is the controller. Controller. Sometimes we, we people used to say Satan is the No. God is above all. He is above all. Without his knowledge, without his um, permission, nothing will happen in the world. Everything is under the control of the Lord. Everything in the uh, feet of the Lord. He is on above everything. So here God said, the God raised the uh, Babylonian and they will, when they came against Nineveh, they will, whatever the prophecy, it is completely fulfilled. There, the fire will devour you, the sword will cut off. I will eat you up like a locust. Complete, you know, when locust came to the, in, uh, to the field, it will completely destroy the fields. Completely destroy the crops. Nothing, it will leave it. So the same way, God said, they are going to put fire and they will take completely destroy you. And also, they will take all your wealth. All your wealth. Take over all the wealth. You know, the recently, probably 100 years back, um, the archaeologist, they dig in the and the Nineva now in Nineva completely uh, went uh, in the ground. So they dig the Nineva and they found out the nation, the city of Nineva was uh, uh, destroyed by fire. So how the prophecy was so awkward. You know, God prophesied, nobody know, but now the people they found it is completely the Nineveh, the city was destroyed by fire. So the prophecy. So whatever God said, it will come to pass. So here, uh, the complete destruction of Nineveh is uh, by the law. So then, uh, again he, the, the things going to happen in the nation of Nineveh. The shield of his mighty men were made red. So, red means, you know, completely full of blood. Because they shed blood, now it is their turn to receive the punishment. Punishment. So, the nation of the, the city, sorry, the city of Nineveh, when the Babylonian invaded the nation, uh, city of Nineveh, they killed all the uh, people and the land was full of blood. Full of blood. The sh uh, shield of his mighty men are made red. The violent men are scarlet. They have the same proud. Babylonian. You know, uh, scarlet uh, is the, the because the evil. They came with the, uh, uh, venge take vengeance against the Assyrians. So they destroy the uh, city of Nineveh. And also, uh, you know, this is their chariot. You can uh, read all these things, the minute detail about the uh, how they bring judgment. Can you read chapter uh, 7, 6, 7, and 8? Chapter 2. Chapter 2, yeah. The gates and the, the gates of the rivers are open and the palace is dissolved. It is decreed. She shall be led away captive. She shall be brought up and her maids will show you her as um, with the voice of doves beating the breasts. Though Nineveh was old, um, was though Nineveh of old was like a pool of water, how they now they feel away hot, hot they cry, but no one turns back. No. Yeah. So God said, the gates of the river are open, open. God said, see you can strengthen your uh, gate, but I am going to open. I am going to open. So the gates of the rivers are open to the Babylonian to invade, to invade the nation of Israel. And also, uh, 
What's that? Um, the river is open and the palace is, is dissolved. Complete destruction. And it is decreased. We read this. And though Nineveh was all like pool of water. Pool of water. You know, water, you know, pool of water is a stagnant water. But God called the church to a river. We want to flow. Wherever we go, we should be a blessing. So the pool of water, they will receive all the blessings. So, uh, you know, as we as we said, the, um, the Nineveh, they invaded all the nations and they took all their wealth. But now, God said, uh, Nineveh was the whole like a pool of water. Now, they flee away. They are running away. They are running away because the Babylonian, Babylonian, they came, the door, the gate was open, they came, they put fire, they killed all the uh, people, those who in the city, but people, they want, they are the, the, the generals, and they are running, they are running, they flee away, halt, halt, they cry, they are running away from the city, and also, uh, but no one turned back. No one, they are not coming up. They are going running for their life. They are running for their life. And also take the spoil. Silver takes spoil of gold. So all their wealth. All their wealth. Now the Babylonian they took it. So so this is the um, it is the fall of Nineveh. So God said you are because of your sin you are you are you can't heal 19 the verse finish with the chapter 3 finish with this your injury has no healing no healing your wound is severe all who hear news of you will clap their hands over you for upon whom has not your wickedness passed continually. So God said, you know, but you know, for nation of Israel, God said, I will restore. I will restore. But here God said, your injury has no healing. You won't be healed. You won't be healed. And your wound is severe because of the evil is so severe. And also all who hear uh, news of you will clap their hands over you. All the, the news probably will spread out, spread out. You know, nobody, nobody is, people are waiting, the whole nation is waiting, America to fall. You know, that's why the all evil people are doing. But you and me to pray. So, they are waiting. So here, when the Nini was fallen, all the surrounded nations, they clap. They clap. Because of they, they, took vengeance. The Nineveh, the Assyrians, they took their property. Now, they are invaded by the Babylonian. Now, they are rejoicing. So, and also, it is the greatest example for us, for the church today, for the believers today. When God brings judgment to nations, nations, so, nobody can stay. So, here we can see they yet you have carried away she went into captive her young children also were dashed to pieces you know they say the same thing to the neighbors the uh, the Assyrians even for the um, Israelites when the Israel the ten tribes when they invaded the Israelites they did the same thing to Israelites now God raised Babylonian they did to them they dashed they cast lot for her noblemen and all her great men were bound in chains. And you also will be drunken and you will be hidden. You also be seek refuge from the enemy. So the same thing, same thing. So when we read, when we read and meditate this word, you know, you and me as a children of God, when it, it should remind us God is expecting, our Lord is a holy God, holy God, God expects us to live a moral life, 
moral life for nations, moral life for Christians. You know, sometimes when we see Christians, they won't have a moral, even moral life, they won't live. So God will bring judgment. But the good news is, God will restore for the believers, for the church. So it is the great hope for God's children. The same way, the, the same time, it is a warning for the pagan people. If they want to restore, if they want to restore by the Lord, they want to come to the God of Israel. They want to come to Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Let's close our eyes.